Okay, I've set a very wild wind field. Um, it's got very random patterns going across this uh, lifting isotropic network kite. And you can see the, the top net here is very much reacting. You see the, the colors change as it goes slightly more red. That's a tighter, more stretched line. Uh, darker green is, is easy original length. So the upwind side here, the lines have been lengthened. This has got active tethering. So each one of these tethers is programmed so that the more upwind ones go longer, the shorter, uh, the, the down ones go shorter. It's set so that all the inside tethering is of a planar one level length. Now that all seems to be going fairly consistent. It's fairly steady on the inside. It doesn't seem to be clattering around too much with the hugely chaotic wind field I've set it. So that's fairly good um, as, a, as a function of what, what we're after in, in, uh, in using these as lifting lines. That, that could be very, very useful. If you notice, particularly on this uh, plan view, the top view, the you can see there the retardation of you know as things move about, it's it's holding back. I'll change the wind field here, you know, the average wind field. I'll I'll swoosh it around a bit, but um, now you'll see the the tethers reacting first of all because they they're gonna act ahead of the wind field actually here that they're sort of programmed in just the way this model's working. It's um, set that they will happen first zoom out a bit there so that you know there's a bit of scraggly a bit a, a bit of a slack response in it you see the line stretching um, but it yeah it holds fairly well as this goes around and I'll move it around and around there'll be a big change in, in the line lengths as the wind goes around so I'll set it all the way over there and it settles down quite rapidly of course, that's uh, very much dependent on the simulation software, but um, considering the the input, it's doing very well, I'd say.